from Garden City, New York, the incomparable Arthur Mercanti Sr. Introducing now the principals first in the blue corner to my right, wearing the black, gold, and green trunks. He weighs in at 172 pounds. His professional record, 31 wins, one defeat, one draw, and 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the WBO middleweight champion of the world and challenger, Otis Magic Grant. Grant. His opponent in the red corner wearing the gold trunks, weighing 171 pounds with a professional record of 37 victories, one defeat, and 31 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from the home of champions, Pensacola, Florida, the WBC and WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. Wow rounds for the WBC and WBA Light Heavyweight Championships. Let's go. That's not it. Right there. Right. Good evening, Roy <clears throat> and Otis. You both received your instructions earlier in the day. You know the rules. Shake hands now and come out boxing at the bell. Good luck. Otis Grant said that he would come out into this fight with his hands high so he doesn't get caught with anything stupid, which sounds like a good idea because Roy Jones said he would try to check his chin in the first round. It's a big night for the Pensacola contingent already. On the undercard, victories for Derek Smoke Gaynor, for Billy Lewis, for David Izon, all of Roy Jones' stablemates who are in the arena fighting tonight. So it's up to Roy now to follow up what has been constructed by his stablemates and keep the Pensacola record perfect for the evening. And what Grant should want to do is get into as many exchanges as he can and try to be the, the land the last shot on the exchanger. Roy Jones went down last time in the latter round because of reckless uh, in, uh, in exchanges. Yeah, yeah, because he, he lost his concentration, got himself into a bad position against Lou Duvall, and got clocked. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to be in and create and land the last shot in the exchanges because Roy Jones, he likes to land a hard shot, but he likes moving out of the way after that. Otis Grant lands to the body oh. to begin the thing. Let's go. Arthur Mercanti Sr. And heaven only knows how many championship fights for Mercanti Sr. You got the number, Larry? It's over 100, isn't it? Oh, about 1,000. <laughs> He's something else. Just as much energy as ever. And he was the third man in the ring in the famous Ali Fraser first fight. And there's another heavyweight title fight coming up in Madison Square Garden in March. Who's that, Jim? Lennox Lewis versus Evander Holyfield. It appears, finally, the details are being worked out. Tactical first round here, George. Yeah, you want to make sure that you get out there first couple of rounds. Don't jump on him. Study film, find out what Roy Jones does not like to do. Well, until he fought, uh, until he fought Virgil Hill, Roy Jones seldom threw body punches, but he has suddenly found after that one punch knock, knockout to the body, that's a useful weapon. He used to work without an effective jab, but in the last four or five fights, he has dramatically improved his jab and is using it throughout the first round here. The good thing about being a southpaw, you automatically got a defense. <laughs> Just being on the wrong side like that, that gives you an automatic defense. So the other guy has to work for everything he lands. 
and it often nullifies the opponent's jab. So if you're working against a guy who's dependent on working off the jab, that can be a big advantage. But Jones, of course, can go completely without it if he needs to. Yeah, he, you want to stick around boxing a long time. You need a jab. Roy Jones is so quick and able to throw punches from so many angles, he just figures a jab might <laughs> throw him out. Anything hurts him, he's going to take advantage of it. All right, baby, all right, good work. Tight defense, he ain't going to give you nothing. We just keep working that jab. Keep working that jab, try to offset him so you can run something on it. Fighting uh -huh. defensive, totally defensive. All you got to do is just stay busy. Stay busy. Work your jab a little bit more for me. Work that jab a little bit more. One little squirt of water. Okay. Where do Even though he's not doing much, right? He's trying to set it up. Don't mm -hmm. stay flat, okay? Just, just a little bit of bounce. And everything else is good. Your block, you're slipping that block, and then you're weaving what's not there. All perfect. It's a, it's a perfect round. Okay? What mile is we caught in a couple of crazy ways? One, three, three. Good job, Jones. Good job. Grant in and out. Jones trying to measure him. Grant doing some talking. College man trying to talk Roy Jones out of this. Lecturing him. He lectured Roy a couple times during the first round. Jones himself said it was an honor to fight Grant because Grant's a college graduate, the right kind of person to be in the sport. Doesn't mean he isn't going to try to knock him out. Incidentally, I turned to Arthur Mercanti Jr., who's seated at the scorer's table next to us, and said, how many title fights for your dad? Arthur Jr. said, I think it's 127. Then he called his dad over and said, 127, is that right? And Arthur Sr. said, no, it's 133. <laughs> so he's a third of the way to 400. That's the way to do it. He looks just as well yeah, today. He's terrific. Round two, still a tactical battle between Roy Jones and Otis Grant. Grant with his southpaw stance, cautious demeanor, trying to land one punch at a time against Roy, who's trying to land one punch at a time against him. Roy Jones, all he has to do is defend this title. The last time he went out, tried to do a lot of other things, shoe shining, stepping to the right and left, didn't help him. Got knocked down, but still won the fight yeah, in a you, virtual shutout on the scorecard. Yeah, but you want to get out there and defend your title and fight hard to keep it. Don't do the extra foolishness. Grant should be creating the exchange enough. Right now, he's staying away from them. hooks in rapid fire succession by Jones there. He has terrific power off the front foot. When you're fighting a guy like Roy Jones Jr., you just can't wait for an opening. You just got to just throw your shot. You've got to keep him up, Roy. Keep him up. Let's go. You wait for something, you, nothing will ever happen. You just got to go out there and throw reckless punches. Something will happen. Might happen to you, though, George. Devastating right hand to the middle of the chest by Jones. This is the one chance in your life you got to take a chance. You know, no one's going to give you their title. You're talking about Grant. Yeah, Grant. He's going to have to take it. No one's going to give you their title. He doesn't look disposed to take any chances so far. Grant's a guy who came in throwing as many as 70 punches around, and in the first couple of rounds, he's had a very limited output. All right. This turkey can't box moving back, baby. He can't box. He's doing total defensive plays when, you, when you're moving him back. Only thing you do is just push his jab out. You can hit him with the power shot. All right, we're getting, we're flowing now. Way to work. 
Yeah, it works. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. You yeah. bother him with that right jab. You understand? Right. And when you have him on the ropes there, and you went in for that second attack, you came out of the flurry. Look, look, fucking faith him. Let him go into a defensive position right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't let him be able to walk off them ropes, all right? Okay. We'll walk off. We'll make walk off. Boxing very smart. All right, very, very smart. Stay there. We mentioned Grant's high punch output in some previous fights, 60, 70 punches around. He's thrown a total of 58 punches by CompuBox numbers in the first two rounds, so averaging less than 30 punches per round. More devastatingly, he's 0 for 39 in his jabs, and you heard Alton Merkerson telling Roy Jones he just pushes his jab out there. Go ahead and attack it. Doesn't help your opponent when you're fast, plus you go to the body also. Roy Jones, he's doing the whole thing here. Jones whacking twice to the body with the right hand. Targeting the middle of Grant's chest and finding the target. Now Jones, again, starting to step around to the left and to the right. Something he shouldn't have to do now. He's been in charge of this fight. A lot of that starts to take the sting out of your legs. In the latter rounds, you start to feel it. And Jones landed a right hand upstairs as Grant finally dropped the guard. With Roy whacking away constantly to his body. Grant's punch output still limited in this round. He still throws the jab about two-thirds of the distance. When he lands, it's normally with a tentative left hand, sometimes to the body. When you're fighting at this weight, you just can't waste a lot of footwork. But sometimes a guy can hurt you not because he's a puncher, just because he's big. For the moment, they're heavyweights. <laughs> There's a redness, kind of a beginning abrasion, under the left eye of Otis Grant, where Roy has targeted him with the right hand on a couple of occasions. See, now Grant is starting to get into the exchanges. After he hits you, throw something, whether you miss or not. Throw something back. right underneath the right arm of Grant. George, if you keep sticking the jab out there without any intention of trying to land it, is it doing you any good? Well, it makes a guy look, try to look past the left hand, but it's not doing a whole lot of good. But he has to stop and think and start all over again when, once you put it out there. And that's what you want to do, make him start all over again if he's thinking about doing something. Stick the hand and the jab out there. punches are hitting Grant right on the elbow. punching something that he can do very well and try to combat a fighter who is trying to just move away from the shoulders up so that his body is still there to hit Roy told us before the fight he wasn't going to try to kill this guy but he won't babysit him either and that sounds about right Now 
the babysitter is the big guy who's sitting with Roy's two seven-year-old son. Jones starting to get a little more aggressive as round four begins. Otis Grant still finding it difficult to get at Roy and engage him in exchanges. And that's what he needs, an exchange. And you know, you sometimes, whoa, that was a right hand by Jones. Devastating right hand. Grant trying to reach for something to hold on to. Roy keeps going. Grant's starting to get his legs back now, but he was stunned. Yeah, he wasn't babysitting him there. Jones grinning at photographers at ringside. Grant moving with every Jones feint. And when Roy gets you moving with his feint, he'll play you like a yo-yo. You gotta expect that now. When you're working out with lightweights in the gym, they do the same thing that Jones is doing to Grant, so he's got to concede some of that and just, hey, he's quicker. Now, Otis finally got into Jones's body and hammered him a couple times to the ribcage. That was, frankly, the best assault I've seen from Otis Grant so far. from three different angles in that assault. That's why he's skeptical about throwing a left jab because he's got so many things on his mind to do with force power punches are concerned. Now that was the exchange. That's the exchange Grant wanted to create for himself. Let him hit you with four, get in one good one. That's the kind of left hand shot the ball was able to catch Jones with. You want the exchanges because you can, you're not small like he's accustomed to. Grant's in trouble on another right hand. But he's been devastated not by power but by speed now. It's a different yeah. speed kills. And you can see what a sportsman Otis Grant is. He laughs and pats Jones on the butt like, damn, you are something. Yeah, that's why he's afraid to lead because Roy is just so quick. It's just another class of athlete. A higher class of athlete. So quick, so punishing. I'm okay. Well, the one he caught you with was a good shot. Two yeah. others you gave to him. Okay. You gave them to him, man. I knew it was funny. Give him more. Yeah. You throw it to him, rain speed. All right. Okay, that's all you need to do. You go to sleep. All right, they want some on your head? Way to work. Way to work. Keep the frames going. Try to turn it. Try to get him turning left and right when he turned to get you. He says that sometimes when he looks at the tapes, he amazes himself <laughs> with the combinations he throws. Here's one of them. Round five begins. I like things for Grant because what he's done, round five is coming. Fight is extended. He's got the bigger shoulders, the bumping and the grinding are going to benefit him now. Harold, how do you have it do through four? Don't look now, but he switched the south for yeah, 20 to nothing. 20 to 36, Roy Jones Jr. Jim, I want to tell you, I saw Roy the great light heavyweight. This guy's the fastest thing I've ever seen for a light heavyweight. I love that move in round four where he turned away and then turned in with that right hand at the end of round four. Roy Jones Jr. is really showing us all the moves, all the power. Tremendous combination punching. In the second round, he hit him a five-punch combination with that left hand before he pulled his left arm back. Roll Roy Jones in this one. What Grant was able to do, he, uh, he made Roy Jones throw his jab, duck under it, and step back. This guy is thinking, I'm telling you. That wasn't a good one. Well, he's definitely a thinking fighter. But he has to be more of a fighting fighter to put Roy a little bit on the defensive. Yeah, because by doing this, 
he gives Jones room and time to make whatever choice he wants to make. I mean, this is this is a graduate school of hard knocks. This is not an undergraduate school for education. The graduate school of super fast hard knocks. I have no respect for the power that Joan has. Just the speed. Good straight left hand by Grant this time. Right between the chest and the chin. That's the punch of the fight. Now you, one start, of them. you throw these shots for two or three rounds. Roy Jones tries to pay you back and you, you got a fight going. Jones should have been a little more aggressive with the jab so that this guy doesn't get a lot of courage to start doing these things. Well, Grant is a guy who's accustomed to outboxing his opponents. Okay. And part of what you're saying, George, is that he won't be able to outbox Roy Jones. He's going to have to outfight him in some way, shape, or form. It's a hard transition to make. Grant came into the fight telling us, we're not going to worry about what Roy Jones does. He's a great fighter, and we don't have any control over that. All we'll be able to do is try to govern. Now what you're going to exchange us now. Yep. And he gets to Jones's body against the ropes. December 12. Tune in for a rematch of one of the great fights of 1998. Ivan Robinson against Arturo Gatti. In their first fight a couple of months ago, Robinson won a 10-round slugfest. But it was classic Gotti stuff again. Also on the card, 1996 Olympian Fernando Vargas goes for his first title against champion Yori Boy Campus. 72 wins, 62 knockouts for Campus. One of the great little known records in the sport. <laughs> Campos has only two losses to truly great fighters Felix Trinidad and Jose Luis Lopez. Suck me up one. There we see Otis Grant finally getting a little bit to Roy. Roy sometimes has a tendency to go back to the ropes like this and let himself be a little bit humbled on. few box oddity through five rounds Otis Grant is an unbelievable zero for 91 in jabs 91 jabs thrown none landed so far by copy box numbers on the part of Otis Grant Jones of course is the fighter who once held Vinny Pazienza without a punch connect for an entire round only fighter ever since the origination of copy box punch count to hold a fighter without a connect for an entire round He's counting on these exchanges, and I'm telling him because of the size of his shoulders, he can benefit by them in the latter round. Roy Jones has got to keep jabbing a little bit and set things up behind the left jab. And Roy, just as you say that, begins to lift the left arm and jab just a little bit. Nothing wrong with a left jab. And yeah, Roy. Grant bull rushing Jones now. Duvall tried that, and it worked a couple of times. That's one way to create exchanges is go forward. That's right, and nothing happened to him when he went forward like that. He's got to find a happy medium to go forward with a shot. Roy looks like he's uh, trying a little too hard to land devastating punches rather than to just fight him and land whatever is there. Good another exchange. What an uppercut. There was a devastating punch. <laughs> now that's the danger of going forward. A perfectly timed uppercut. Tries it again. Now he's holding. Grant intelligently tries to hold on, but doesn't get enough of a piece. Now he's got him. That Roy Jones threw an uppercut that time. And Grant's legs don't look too good as he goes backward to the middle of the ring. That front leg is stiff. And Jones knows it. He's attacking him. Still a little wobbly. There's 
that has changed that Grant can benefit by now. Too much on the defensive at this moment, though. Now he's starting to get his consciousness back a little. Now that is another exchange. He was able to land a good loop in his left hand. You're not going to stop Jones from being good. What you want to do is get in one yourself. I think Jones is hoping Grant will come at him again and he can try that uppercut one more time. Grant showing some resilience here. Second knockdown of the fight. Credit to DeRoy Jones. up for a big shot looking for an opening and finds it right there punch look it might have landed like high on the chest just the force of the blow seemed to turn him over well he tried to get his knee from out of that position that's why he ran started to roll over backwards he was caught good When you fight a fighter like Roy Jones, you gotta count the cost, how much it's gonna cost to build this house prior to it. Hey, there are gonna be some knockdowns, there are gonna be some scratches, but hey, I gotta stay in there and good things can happen. You just don't want too many of them. Best thing that can happen is the fight should end as quickly as possible, Rhodes Grant. Grant, a dedicated sportsman, certainly wants to compete to the best of his ability here. You heard him tell his trainer manager, Russ Amber, between rounds, I'm fine. I can see the punches coming. You just can't get out of the way. He's waiting for one good shot. Roy Jones, his eyes are too good for that. Let's get going. I was just about go, to say, go, go, go they're, it's almost as if they're posing as slow motion statues. Arthur McKenney, good for you. I wonder, can you take points from guys? I was to say, but what would you do? Right. Analyze them both? Right. So what? Make it a 9-9 nine, nine round. <laughs> I mean, Grant should be commended. He's knocked down the last round. He's back into this thing. He's got the guy hesitant. Exactly right. I, I'm not even sure it's the referee's business. Yeah, that's you know? right. Hey, I've lived <laughs> no, no, through all of this. I disagree. I think they're here to fight, and if they're just standing there and looking at each other and posing, I think what Arthur McKinney did was exactly right. Well, but by what authority? I mean, it's a good suggestion. It's, there's little he can do to make them do something if both are going to do the same thing. I mean, again, as, as we say, penalize them both Grant, the point, make it a 9-9 round. Grant benefit. No action. He can thoroughly recover from that knockdown. No question. The longer it goes without Roy hitting him, the better off Grant is. He's not hitting Roy enough anyway. <laughs> oh, there's another straight right, and Grant grabs and holds. Yeah, this guy, Roy Jones, is starting to load up now. We're gradually getting into the area where the Mosley layhop dice wound up. And the question becomes, how much punishment does Grant want to take? We've already seen it once before tonight. December 19, Floyd Mayweather Jr. attempts to finish off an astounding 1998 with his fight against Angel Manfredi. Mayweather has gone from Olympic silver medalist to champion in two years. 
Don't underestimate Manfredi, of course. He, too, has won a championship at 130 pounds and has wins over Arturo Gatti and John Brown in 1998. Also that night, heavyweights David Tua and Hasim Rahman square off in a vital fight for both men. The winner of that fight, particularly if he produces a spectacular performance, will linger on the edges of the heavyweight championship picture. And that left hand has to go downstairs and back upstairs. But even if it's not, even if this is not like bother and knock his hand down, slide it in. Bother it, knock it, knock it. Bring that one over All the right, top. All right, let's go. All right. Let's go Amber making it clear he wants Grant to keep throwing the jab whether he lands it or not. Joy Jones, standing flat-footed, eyes wide open. Yeah, looking for another chance to land his right hand. That's the punch that's done most of the damage. And he's not tired. <laughs> well, Roy, he gets the luxury of fighting at a measured pace because via his quickness and his astonishing counter-punching ability, he limits his opponent's output so much that he can sort of take his time and pick his shots. Nothing happens until he's ready. That's right. Those are the exchanges that Grant should be in on. You don't have to wait to hit him. Just put your hands up. But getting into those exchanges creates the possibility that Roy catches it again close with another one of those uppercuts. And there's a great... A great combination from Grant. Under the circumstances, that's a terrific effort. You've got to create something if you're going to fight for the title. Once in a lifetime chance, you just got to gamble. Otis Grant fighting out of Montreal. Doesn't get the publicity or the opportunities that other North American fighters might get. He knew what this meant to him. Roy Jones is going around to the body, going over left and right side, protecting himself from any hard punches later on in the fight. Taking a lot of the power away from Grant. Grant if he had a little left all. hand upstairs. Yeah, he doesn't have much punching power. As we showed 17 knockouts in his 32 wins coming in. But he certainly didn't expect to knock out Roy Jones. He hit him in the chest that time. Just as Jesse James Leha was brave against Shane Mosley, so too is Otis Grant honorably brave against Roy Jones. Grant's only his chance to get into one of those exchanges, catch Roy Jones, leaning in a little bit. No hope for him to stand on the outside and box him and get a shot. Instead, he comes forward and catches another one of those whistling uppercuts. Like that. Well, now, I'm watching you get player. inside where you're in a position to work. Top light heavyweights, Larry. Here's a look at them, Roy Jones. Reggie Johnson would have been here tonight, but for a shoulder injury. And here you see the two Germans, neither of whom seems eager to come over and challenge Roy Jones. Both of them make a lot of money in Europe. And David Telesco is an up-and-coming young light heavyweight who's made an impression recently could be fighting Roy by the end of 99. Jones's one-time nemesis, Montel Griffin, an upset loser last night to a young fighter named Eric Harding, who may become a factor in the division. Yeah, I'd like to see Telesco and Harding fight. Harold 
Hold, how do you have it through eight? Real big for Roy Jones. Eight to nothing, 80 to 71. A dominating performance by Roy Jones Jr. Just keeps hammering him, hammering him with those left hooks, the straight right hands, the combinations. I mean, the total package. This is just one of the most one-sided fights I've ever judged, Jim. I mean, it's a total no-brainer as far as the scoring is concerned. That Jones is done it use his left jab. I like that. Harold, your daughter Julie scores several of the undercard fights here tonight. Did you critique her work? <laughs> I can't, Jim. She punches harder than I do. <laughs> but she's still the best judge in the family. She scores just as well. <laughs> Roy Jones, good left hook and out of the way. You know, earlier tonight I said we would be... Uh, watching performance art or a concert tonight rather than competition. Um, concerts are great for music and comedy, but I'm not sure this has had the, uh, the drama that we want to see in boxing. Well, it's been jazz, not rock and roll, as, as Roy Jones is quite content to land one punch at a time, if that's all that's possible. Yeah, he shouldn't have been you know, look, you're the, you're the champ. Win the fight. Don't create and do more than you have to. You can end up getting hurt. Now he was hit with a good sliding right hand that time. And Roy doesn't like to get hit. By his own candid admission. It would be good for Grant to keep that fight just like that for a few rounds. Just keep it like that. There you go. Roy Jones can do nothing when he's on the rope. Why not just keep him on the rope? Let the referee say break, back up, jump right back on him. This is one of the best things Grant can do. It limits Jones' power, and it gives him a chance to land. Oh, Roy Jones is saying, come now. Grant busts Jones with a left and a right and then ties Roy up as Jones tries to retaliate. Suddenly round nine is in such a bad frame for Otis Grant. Evidently now the, the corners, put him in the corners, not just on the rope, but take him back to the corners. Something Griffin was able to do in the first fight with Jones before the disqualification, something Mike McCallum was able to do against Jones in what became an easy Roy Jones decision. Grant Bell just put his hands right by his chin and bob and weave. All right, all right, all right. Look at a round. Good round. Water. I feel Otis. Right there. Mm -hmm. Suck it up, suck it up, baby. <laughs> suck it up, I am. You sure? I'm good. What you Look around doing that there time. is what you've got to be doing. Okay? That's what you've got to be doing. You let him take you to the ropes and you sit as a target, he's going to hit you. <laughs> he's going to hit you. Up, this is 10. All right? You keep working like that when you've got to hit you. Catch up with it. Okay, watch it. Okay. Right here. All right. All right, baby. Mouthpiece. 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 The ninth was Grant's best round, but he indicated in his corner that he was hurt by a body shot. That's like a... One of those snakes, venom. Strike shit, no one even saw it, but it hurts. Viper. And Harold Letterman gave the ninth round to Otis Grant, a round in which Grant, by CompuBox numbers, landed 13 to 23 punches, meaning when he was able to throw, he landed. Boy, he went into his corner the last time, walking sideways. Oh, he was he was hurting for certain. And you heard him say to his cornerman, I got caught with a body shot. You can see the pain. You think that Roy Jones knows it, George? I don't think so. Uh, I think the body punching is just an avocation here, you know. <laughs> Roy Jones is gradually painting a picture on Otis Grant's face. Goes back to the body with the left hand there. Grant ducking down to try to avoid the body punches. Great right hand by Jones. And on the 
delayed reaction, the third official knockdown of the fight. Six, seven, eight. And Grant is blinking in the corner. And, the, and his corner is going to throw in the top. That's Mr. right. Good, the no, top. that's right. Don't allow him to stop the fight. It's a good idea. The referee is wise this time. And you just got to step in and say no. The guy was okay. He allowed him to get up. But the trainer manager, Russ Amber, who has been with Otis Grant from the very beginning, made it unequivocal. He wanted the fight stopped. Harold. Uh, Larry, let me tell you. If the trainer, the chief second, steps on the apron under the rules, the fight is over. Okay? You can't throw the towel in. The candy's right for not recognizing the, recognizing the towel. All right, all right. But when a chief second wants the fight stopped, he steps on the apron, and that's it. The chief second does have that right to, to stop the fight. Well, I'm, uh, Amber was all the way into the ring, exactly. and I'm not sure McCanty exactly. was clear yet that he was going to stop it because McCanty had a lot of respect for the fighter who looked okay. But Amber made it abundantly clear when he came through the ropes and put himself in the The, the ring. important thing is, is that the trainer and manager did the right thing. Uh, both fights were similar in this regard. The champions just uh, came up against fighters who were prepared to take a lot of punishment and did, and eventually were beaten down by body punches. Very similar fights in different styles. I think it was brave of the referee to say, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's kind of brave. You don't hardly see that anymore. Well, this guy's a classy guy, mm -hmm. Otis Grant. And, keep the ball. and the relationship he has with his trainer-manager is obviously a friendship as well as a professional relationship, and that's what Amber was expressing, I think. Yeah, he benefited, no doubt about it. He can come back another day with a one not so fast. There's the knockdown. I'm not sure Grant thought he was going to lose his balance on that. It's the kind of punch he had taken effectively earlier in the bout. And maybe that's what prompted Amber to say, hey, wait, if he goes down on that, he's had enough. <laughs> but I think it was great that the referee made that decision. I mean, that's a decision for boxing. Arthur McCanty in title fight number 133 for him. Scorecards. Jones was ahead by... Nine or ten points on all three guards. Headed toward an easy victory. He gets the uh, technical knockout in round number ten. Shane Mosley got his after the ninth. Well, no, Art, these are, Art says we can keep the glove. And Jones festooning himself with title belts. <laughs> They've gotten bigger since the old days, haven't they, George? Yeah, they get, keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> About big enough for you now. <laughs> they never did fit my waist. Now, there's the towel, which was thrown into the ring, and Mercanti grabbed it and said, I'm going to toss the towel out of here. But here comes Amber jumping over the ropes, you saw. You have no choice but to stop it then when your corner man comes in. It's a disqualification anyway. And even at that point, I think Mercanti still wanted to offer the opportunity to the fighter to go forward. But as Harold Letterman clearly told you, by the rules, the fight was over as soon as Amber was on the apron. Puts one in mind of Lou Duva standing on the apron when Meldrick Taylor saw his fight stopped against Julio Cesar Chavez with two seconds to go. So now, I have to assume we're ready to Mark Barrow, ready to go to Mark Barrow for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner has requested a stoppage of this bout. Referee Arthur Mercanti Sr. has complied at one minute, 18 seconds of the 10th round. The winner by tactical knockout. Punch stat numbers, one-sidedly in favor of Jones, who 
landed 107 more punches. Both guys throwing sparingly. I mean, that's, that's an output of about 40 punches around for Roy. And for Grant, it's more like 25 punches per round. So you can see a lot of this was, was just Jones landing power shots. He only landed 28 out of the 101 jabs he threw. And <laughs> check it out. <laughs> that Jones Gen is just so fast. Generously, we give Grant credit for a 1% connect rate on his jabs. It, it was really, oh, more like 7 tenths of a percent. <laughs> Larry Merchant with the winner and still light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones. Larry? Thank you, Jim. Congratulations again, Roy. It looks, Roy, that for a fighter who used to not throw many body punches, you've suddenly found it a very useful part of your arsenal. Well, first of all, I thank God for giving, for giving me the opportunity to do what I do, Larry. Uh, I said one time, I come to the house, what's up, Mud Cat, Louisiana. The body shots, as you progress as a fighter, as you get older, you have to start working on picking up and improving other parts of the game, other parts of the game. You can't just get complacent and be satisfied as being one thing. So I've dom dominated to the head all my career. People say, Roy doesn't throw many body shots. So I said, okay, let's go and show them that I have a complete all-around arsenal. I can do whatever's necessary to win a fight. Are you finding now, as you are approaching 30, that you're a little bit more flat-footed and trying to make a kind of a transition a little bit in your boxing? No, it's just that you couldn't back up from the southpaw. You know, I had to keep the pressure on because I was the champion. He wasn't going to take any unnecessary chances, so I had to come at him. The last southpaw I fought was a counterpunch, a guy who, if I stood back, it would have been a boring fight. So I had to try to pick up the issue and go forward and fight a little more flat-footed. That's one of, the, one of the disadvantages of facing the southpaw. Do you have any preferences for your opponents in 1999? You know I don't really care, Larry, as long as everything is right. Roy Jones always just do this. Pensacola, Mobile, Gulf Coast, Mississippi, Milton, everywhere, down the Gulf Coast. We the best. I'm the man. I don't care who it is, what it takes. I will do what I got to do to get them out of here. Thank you very much, Roy. Right, and if he busts the guy up in the ring, he can...